Okay, next I'm going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro and I'm going to click on the new project tab here. We will name this project Nelson. Then we're going to go to location, click on browse to open up some location options. And we're going to click on the project folder there so that this project will now be saved in the project folder. Okay, for the video rendering and playback, I have mine set to OpenCL. My laptop's a few years older, so OpenCL is best. I'm gonna stick with these settings here as is. So display format, we've got time code, audio samples, and capture format DV. So we're gonna push OK. Now that Premiere's opened up, it is set to my default setting that I've created, which you can see at the top here. It's highlighted in blue, Alley 15, edit middle, and we are going to import our footage. So I'm gonna right click here in the project panel, click on import, and I'm going to click on ACAM. Okay, so we have our footage imported here. You can see all the clips right there when you hit the drop down arrow. I'm just gonna hit that so they go back up. So I'm going to double click into the folder here and as you can see we have both the 1920 by 1080 as well as the 3840 by 2160 so that's a combination of 1080 and 4k clips. You can also see here the clips that are just these purple little film strips have no audio with them so these are the b-roll clips and then if we scroll down You'll see these clips here with the little green audio symbol indicate that there is audio connected to those clips. Okay, and you can also see that the file structure is a little bit out of order. It starts at four here and you can see down here we've got one, two, three. So I'm just going to click name at the top so that it starts at one. I'm going to click on that clip, hold down shift on my Mac. Go down to the bottom here, hit shift, and I've got them all highlighted. Now I'm going to go back up to the top, grab this one, and drag it down onto the timeline. That's brought down all of these clips in the same order that this folder structures in, and it also created a sequence right within this folder. So I'm going to drag that out of the folder and into the project panel. We'll close this folder. And let's rename this sequence by double clicking on it, all footage. Now when I did that, it automatically decided what the sequence settings were going to be. As you can see here, the sequence settings are in 4K. You can tell because this footage here is, I know that it's 1080 and therefore it's created this negative space behind it. You'll also notice as I'm scrolling through that it's going pretty slowly. That's because these are pretty big files here. So I'm set on this clip here and it took several seconds before the clip showed up in the program view, but you can see this is 4K. What I wanna do is actually change this sequence to a 1080 sequence. And we'll look into why more later, but let's go up to the top here and click on sequence. We'll click sequence settings. And we're gonna go into editing mode here, click on that and let's change it to custom. We'll stick with the time base here of 23.976 frames per second because that's what it was filmed on. And we're gonna actually change the frame size to 1920 and tab over to horizontal 1080. Okay, 16.9, yep, that's right. We'll keep these options the same. The audio will keep the same. You can see down here as well that we've got the video previews at 1920 by 1080. Okay, so we're gonna click okay. That's fine, we'll click okay for that. So now what it's done is it's actually zoomed in all of the 4K footage, but all of the 1080 footage fits to screen. You'll also notice here that I have a button option that I've added called toggle proxies. Proxies make the life of an editor so much easier and more efficient. So if you don't know what proxies are, let's go over them in the next lesson because they will save you so much time and frustration when you're working on an edit.